Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of BA Select Start. Press start. Uh, we are back here <laughs> with another episode. We are here with another very special episode. Yes, this episode is as special as the what edition of uh, 2K20 this year, where you get uh, an autograph and a piece of the ring. The Smackdown 20th edition, or whatever. Is it 20? Is it 1999? That, I don't that, know about 1999, that... but I'll tell you what, since you're God mentioning nines, <laughs> I thought you were setting me up no, for that. No, didn't mean to do that, but you know what, it works, go for it. <laughs> well, since we're speaking of nines, you can catch all your favorite WWE programming only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of only $9.99. Uh, and consequently, also speaking of nines, uh, if you haven't already uh, listened to our other uh, recent episode about the ninth wonder of the world, China, go ahead and pop over and check that one out as well uh, on the main page, the main playlist for a WP. Anyway, so let's hop on in with this. So Yes, today we actually have a two little segments on the show. Right now we're at a point in time where we're kind of on the road to WWE 2K20, seeing that it's coming out on yeah. October 22nd. So for the first half of the episode, we're going to be talking about the latest piece of information that we received this past week, and then we're going to continue the little mini-series within the series about talking about you know all the WWE video games. Today we'll be talking about the SmackDown vs. Raw series, but before we get into that, Dan, go ahead. All right, so uh, the first thing that's that outside of the the China being included in the game and Becky and Roman being the cover stars, the first real bit that we've gotten uh, moving us into the hype session yeah. uh, for the game is the new Bump in the Night horror-themed DLC pack that you can get f uh, as part of the deluxe version, the SmackDown 20th uh, uh, collector Collector's Edition. And uh, eventually, I, I don't know if it'll be available at release, but you can buy it for fourteen ninety nine yeah. once the game comes out, if you don't do one of those packs. Or you pre-order. Or pre-order. And so, the, the highlight, the main draw for this is The Fiend. Yes. Bray Wyatt. Uh, because we just got to see him in action at uh, SummerSlam, and it was was it the next night or it was within the next couple days after SummerSlam? I think like this, the right? Tuesday of, so like two days later. Yeah, yeah, so a couple days after, after we finally saw him in the ring, then they were like, "Oh, by the way, you can play as the Fiend." Uh, so he's the head the headliner of this uh, pack. But the whole gist here is that it's basically horror themed characters, and it's ver mo modified versions of various people. And I'll burn through that real quick. Because you've got the Fiend, Bray Wyatt, the Demon King, Finn Balor, and then the rest of these these characters are all obscure. Like, they're not actually people you've seen. Supernatural. Yeah. So you've got the Swamp Father, Bray Wyatt, who's green, and he looks kind of like Cthulhu. Uh, Frank and Strowman, uh, who actually looks pretty cool based on the, the picture that's on here. Because he's got, like, a thing in his chest to keep him alive and all Embossed of his... Embossed in there. Yeah, or not right. embossed, like inserted in there, literally. Yeah. yeah, and his limbs are stitched together. He's got one weird cane eye going on. Uh, wicked Alistair Black, who that he's. We weird. didn't even recognize, by the way, when we saw that graphic art. Yeah, he looks a little bit like um, Santa Claus. Like Sa if Santa Claus and the Night King from Game of Thrones um, had a baby. Yeah, had a baby. Uh, Unleashed Apex Predator Randy Orton, who's basically Voldemort Randy Orton, if you are a Harry Potter fan, and if not, he's a snake. Um, I would have never known. <laughs> and then Fed Up Seamus, who kind of looks like um, Simon Pegg's character from uh, Shaun of the Dead. Is that what we call him? Um, Seamus Sh of the Dead. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but then there's also two mystery versions of superstars that I'm pretty sure we can infer from the rest of the stuff. Um, because they mentioned Twisted Nikki Cross and Survivor Mandy Rose um, as part of the five exclusive 2K Towers that come with this pack. Um, so I'm assuming that those two are going to be the mysteries. And we'll see what they look like, but they're not included in the, uh, in the, art. the promo art. Yeah. But along with the characters, you also get a ton of creative... It says dozens. I'm just going to say a ton. A ton of creative superstar parts. Some creative and arena parts. Uh, new weapons and new moves. Um, like I don't, 
I don't know. Like, it's it looks like uh, Headless Horseman pumpkin armor and, like, some weird staff that I don't know if you can hit people with, but that'd be kind of fun. It's like a weird ram horn skull bone staff thing. Like a Papa Shango thing? Kind of. Um, but then you also get the Wyatt Swamp Arena and the Cemetery Brawl Arena. Um, and then the last thing is really new 2K Showcase. Uh, where an alternate Swamp Father version of Bray Wyatt has amassed otherworldly power, becoming an embodiment of the swamp itself. He lures Finn Balor to his compound to recruit Finn's demon into his group of powered superstars, which he calls his family. Finn is forced to fight in a series of matches against members of Wyatt's family until finally the power within Finn Balor is unleashed. Exclusive commentary brings the story to life. So that's that's really the last thing on the list of uh, inclusions, but beautiful narrator voice. By thank the way. you. Uh, but it sounds it sounds like fun. I I'm excited to play as the as the fiend, and I I love Finn Balor in general. And then we'll see how some of these other other characters um, play. But yeah. I would say one of the other things I'm I'm most excited about is just to see all of these dozens of creative superstar parts because we've talked about how that's one of my favorite things to do is to create the people. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like fun, and so that's why I'll probably go with the deluxe version when it comes out. Because um, I again I don't care about the yeah collectors Who edition does? this year. Like I said, a special as the collectors edition, which no one has interest in. <laughs> Um, but what what are your thoughts on on all of those? So a few things. Um, someone actually pointed this out. Do you realize that this very close to so from SummerSlam to the release of the game, we're looking at two months. Yeah. Someone brought up the the point of that. Two K usually never includes a character who just made an on screen appearance this late. Yeah. Right before release yeah. of the game. So, so it's kind of, it's kind of surprising. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, oh, it's kind of a last minute person making a last minute debut, but they're still putting it in the game. Yeah. And as a pre order, so it's like you got to have everything ready for that when the game comes out. Yeah. It's not a later thing. It's you know right at the front. So possibly that's I mean that that's that's a plus. So that, that that's a good sign. Secondly, I know that in two K eighteen. Um, no, sorry, 2K19, they were very much experimenting with the Matt Hardy multiverse and, you know, the, the Bray <laughs> Wyatt... <story. laughs> the Bray Wyatt compound and, like, the, the fictitious stuff that was in that. So now it seems like they have really cranked up the volume on that by doing this, which yeah. is, like, all original stuff that it's, like, outside of the WWE universe, yeah. literally. Um, now, the, the, the thing to take away from this also is that these this is going to be a series of things each of these download packs is going to be called WWE 2K20 Originals meaning all of these characters are going to be themed around something and they're going to be their own characters yeah so it's not necessarily going to be just like oh here's a legend it's going to be an original version of a character i'm assuming and I wouldn't mind if they, like, have alternate move sets as well. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, instead of Finn Balor having the coupe, the coupe de grace, as I call it, uh, maybe he has something else like, uh, I don't know. Like, I know with the Papa Shango a few years ago, they had this thing where if you do his taunt, your opponent would not be able to reverse for 15 seconds, which was like a supernatural type of thing. So I'm hoping that they incorporate more of that with, with these, because... Let's be honest. Okay, they might have an alternative, you know, appearance, but if the move set is the same, it's like, okay, so it's basically the same wrestler with an alternate costume. Um, and also another thing, I think that this allows for a lot of uh, better um, creator wrestler options because I know that you know it, right now it's very linear. Like you can put clothes and you can put you know armbands and wristbands, but I wouldn't mind if we have a feature where. You can put blood, or you can put, you know, the the thing that's in Braun Strowman's yeah. chest. You know, like allow for us to be a little bit flexible. You know, yeah. like step outside of the comfort zone of just threads yeah. and tape and gloves. You know, yeah. like more, uh, more options, more, more freedom. More, yeah, more freedom. Um, so I personally think a step in the right direction. What do you think? I'm excited about it <laughs> um, because. Like, like kind of what we've discussed with the concept behind the what if the what if yeah kind of thing is it it makes it less um 
uh, straightforward. Linear. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I think that's one of the one of the things that as these games have gotten more involved, as they've gotten flashier, um, that we've kind of lost because yeah. when you when you started out with the earlier SmackDown games. Like like we mentioned last time, it was the small changes yes. were big changes. Yeah. And then we we got to like 2012, and they've all just little changes have been little changes. Yeah. So to then take this and use use this basically to put out a lot of cool reskins of wrestlers that we already know. Yeah. And uh, tailor it toward themes. It gives it a little bit more personality, and it, yeah. it, it it makes it more engaging than if it's just oh, and here's some legends. Oh, here's some divas. Here's some NXT super. Why don't you just put those? Dan, why don't you just put them in the game and then do something like this? Well, maybe they will this time. Well, they are. Well, I mean, yes, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how the the actual roster shapes up because I'd like to I'd like to see a really expansive general roster. Where you've got a ton of the NXT stars, you've got the majority of the Raw and SmackDown stars, um, the NXT UKs, the 205 Lives. Um, I just want to see a giant roster natively. Yes. And then have the originals be these uh, never before seen kind of spins on yeah. things that make us go, this is really cool. I really like playing as Apex Predator Randy Orton instead of regular Randy Orton. Right, yeah. Um, Hashtag no duplicates. Yeah, sort of. Um, but no, I I think it's a good, it's a step in. The I think right yeah, direction. step in the right direction, definitely. You know, I, I think that they've, because like I said, in two K nineteen there was the big head mode, there was the create um, uh, blocks. What was it? Oh yeah, yeah, the block. The I never successfully did that. I wanted <laughs> to take my guy and make a, a Minecraft, Minecraft version of it. Version of it, yeah. Uh, block mode, I think is what they called it. Okay, yeah. And you could just. <laughs> Like I, the thing with that is, I because I never did it. Have you? Did you watch any videos about that? Not exactly, no. Because I didn't either. So that's what I was gonna say. I don't know if they would, if it lets you take your little block person and fight a non-block person. I have no idea how that works. But it was, it was funny, and I yeah. try, I tried to do it. Uh, I'll have to revisit that at some point, but. But a good way of experimentation, kind yeah. of stepping out the comfort zone of just create a regular wrestler where it's yeah. like, okay, let's incorporate this, let's incorporate that. So, yeah. again, I think that the the bump in the night, very good addition, we'll have to see, I mean, because I feel like it's either going to be really good or it's going to be really bad. Yeah. So, it's like, until we pre-order, play it, find out, we won't know, but we'll definitely give a review on that once we do it. Now, real quick, going down this path, let's just let's just spitball a little bit. What uh, what are some alternate things you'd like to see as as other original packs or? Because there's I think three DLC tires, like still to come after this. I believe so. I think. But I don't more. think they're going with NXT superstars or whatever. Yeah. Um, maybe like alternate versions of people who are in the game, like an alternate version of an AJ Styles or yeah. a Daniel Bryan or a, I don't know a Roman Reigns or whatever. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing that, uh, but then again, that would have to be the complete package of like alternate music, alternative entrance, alternative moves. It's not just it's Roman Reigns, but just with a different appearance. Because yeah. that that would not sell it for me. There's no point in doing that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What about you? Um, I could almost see the packs being holiday themed packs at this point. <laughs> That's with this one funny. Being Halloween, like creepy horror movie. Yeah. Um. So I could see there being like a, a Christmas or winter themed pack okay. where you've got like uh, Santa Stroman and like you might see like um, an elf page like from Santa's Little <laughs> yeah, Helper, yeah, yeah. Um, things like that. And then, goddamn, if the gobbledygooker is in this game, <laughs> oh, if I bought the regular game and then they went, hey, gobbledygookers in this this pack. I'm buying that pack. Are you serious? Bucks. But you're serious. I would buy the shit out of a gobbledygooker uh, in all, character. In, in all seriousness, yes. you would. Yeah, that would be hilarious. So I could see the gobbledygooker uh, pack. Yeah, I don't know what the hell you would do. You'd probably it would probably be some campy ass shit where you'd have like somebody dressed as a pilgrim. Uh, you'd have like pilgrim. And you have to rally everybody around the Thanksgiving yeah. table. 
Dude, if they what the hell was that stupid match? The the Thanksgiving uh, gravy bowl feed, match. The, is that what it was? The gravy bowl match. If they had the, if they put that, that in, that in the game, <laughs> that'd be the dumbest shit ever. But I'd play it. Um, it's kind of like the feast or fired from TNA. Um, or the oh dude, God. if they did the APA bar brawl, that that would be fun. That'd actually. be a fun that little match fun. to have over there. That could also be in one of the packs. But no, I, I could see it being um, holiday-themed. Um, I don't know what their end game is, because if this one's like horror movies, they might go with like movies, movie themes. Okay. Like, you know what else might be fun? If they um, w- revisited uh, WrestleMania 21, and they took oh. the wrestlers as the movie characters that they played... <laughs> <laughs> and then they put, put them in. in the game in in their outfits. So like Braveheart, Triple H, uh, Dirty Harry, Undertaker, uh, who was it? Book, Booker and Eddie from Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. Um, Batista from Eugene Taxi. Eugene Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Forrest Gump, Eugene. Dude, put hashtag Eugene Returns. <laughs> If Eugene's not in this game and Muhammad Hassan's not in this game, Yuck. I'm gonna be pissed. But yeah, no, that, that so that's kind of my thought pro- process on these. I could see them being either like movie movie centric or holiday centric. Yeah, either one will probably be fine. But I don't I don't want them to be the traditional NXTs. Yeah, I want it to pack. be something interesting, and I don't kind of like what you said. I don't want it to be just uh, here's uh, Tori Wilson in the game wearing a wearing a pilgrim hat. Yeah. It's the same fucking character with a pilgrim hat. Right. I want them to look like these guys do. Um, and once again, you know, we we were you were just addressing that. I think that the one thing that Two K needs to do pronto is uh, break comfort zone. Yeah. Um, break tradition. Uh, not be. Not be off, not be authentic. I guess is what I'm trying to say. You know what you did, what you've been doing for the last six, seven years. Don't do that anymore. Move on to something else. Move on with. And I think once again, this is a great step, um, because we're essentially getting something that we know is probably not going to happen in the real WWE, and something that we haven't seen in the in the virtual world in WWE games or outside of WWE games. So to have this now. Um, I think it's a really good addition. So, with that, unless if you have any more... Uh, no, I, I, the only thing I'll, I'll pep around here before we can sh- uh, shift is uh, go ahead and give us your ideas in the comments uh, if you're listening as to what some fun uh, 2K20 Originals uh, packs would be. Uh, what you would like to see, what you think we might see, um, your thoughts on that. Yes. So with that, let's segue into uh, the second part of our uh, you know mini series where we're reviewing all the games. If you guys haven't catched it yet, you can catch last week's episode where we did SmackDown one all the way to Here Comes the Pain. This time we're doing SmackDown versus Raw from 2004 all the way to SmackDown versus Raw 2000. Six, six to eleven. Six was the first one. Two thousand six. No, SmackDown versus Raw. Oh, you're own. right. You're right. Never mind, I'm a liar. Because what was it? It was SmackDown versus Ross. Smackdown and then it was versus... 06. Oh, so yeah, it would have been tail end of 04. So, okay, SmackDown versus Raw 2005, if we're, if we're being technical. Sorry, our time, my timeline's just fucked up. But, uh, yeah, so we're doing the SmackDown versus Raw section of yes. the SmackDown games. So, welcome to hi- the history of SmackDown. Uh, so moving on, we got, yeah, SmackDown vs. Raw was a game series of WWE games that started from 04 to 2011, made by THQ, which I believe, uh, these were the last ones that THQ made, because they uh, did the originals, Yeah. they did these, and then t- was 12 still THQ? 13 has- was still THQ, and then is where we went to 2K. Okay. So. I think Ukes was also doing this? Mm-hmm. Developing it? Maybe. It's yes, no, maybe so. Here. Okay. But, uh, so, let's see. Um, so this was the first, first, so SmackDown vs. Raw was the first game with the brand, with the brand split. Right, yeah. Um, uh, thus the name. Um, I don't recall what all was in the first one. Um, basically a tone, a, a bit of a toned down season mode from Here Comes the Pain. 
roster took a major hit and this is not because they chose to not incorporate you know all the big players but your Goldberg had walked out so he's no longer under contract Lesnar was no longer under contract um, Steve Austin is not in the game uh, Hogan is not in the game um, so when you have some big players missing because I mean they have like they had like Rene Dupree and Garrison Cade and like Mark Jindrak oh, yeah, yeah. and all these small all time those guys. Random ass guys. Yeah. And then but now it was at a point where they started incorporating the the legend. So like the yeah, yeah. the Le- old school legend taker. taker, masked Kane, Kane yeah. Mankind, Mankind Rock Snooka, The Rock, Hawk and Animal, <laughs> Brett. It was uh, Andre was in this, right? Andre, Brutus Beefcake, uh Stevie was in this one. Um and Piper. Oh, was Piper in this one? I forgot about that. But yeah, so the the roster not, it was yeah, not a huge roster. That's uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna count. Go ahead and talk. Yeah, okay. Um, well, I mean, not from the only from perspective of of numbers, but just like who was in it was kind of like it's not bad, but it's not really good because you had a lot of big players missing. Um, yeah, you only had 53, uh, 53 people in this game, and a handful of them are. Ten of them were the legends. Okay. And then you had a shitty Molly Holly, apparently. <laughs> yeah, it's a sh- it's a shallow game, especially once you yeah. get into the into the other ones. Yeah, Garrison Cade or Lance Cade, as he came to be known, rest in peace. But oh, that was him. Yeah. Yeah, same guy. Um, I will say this though, with that, um, gameplay was actually very fun, and I know they incorporated like um, when you select your character, you can do clean, neutral, or dirty. So yeah, it's you like can you pick can, your, your yeah. Style, yeah, which which was a nice touch. I like it um, because like if you're a bad guy, you do the low blows, the eye rakes, and all that. If you're a good guy, you taunt and you get a boost. So. It was good to have that. You know that being a face or a heel means something as opposed yeah. to it's just you're a face or you're a heel. Um, outside of that, I really can't say a whole lot. When this game was out in Blockbuster, which I think some of the younger generation is probably not going to know what that is, but it was like a rental place where you go to rent out games. Yes, we used to rent out games before we bought them in the past. Um, I would just rent this game out and I would play it and it was fun. Um but I would I would t- I would rate it as a tone down. Here comes the pain. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I really don't have much to say about the game. Yeah. It. It, that, that, it was it was the first one shifting out from the original SmackDown. Yeah. Um, I think you start to see a little bit of a shift in the controls. Yeah. Uh, which we kind of talk about. We we've spoken about with the continued growth because at about 2008 I remember the control system being really different really different but I liked that one uh 2006 which was the introduction of general manager mode and some of the other things uh you saw uh a jump from 53 to 63 which doesn't sound like a ton but but this was also I looking at the the names on here I think this was a really good time yeah within WWE for names mattering yes because you'll look through it and like the legends you have here are brett andre british bulldog uh uh, jake roberts uh the three hogans uh jimmy hart junkyard dog mankind and dibiase but then like you look at some of the minor minor uh wrestlers on here and the, they still mattered yes. at the time. You look at them and you go, yeah, Carlito, Chris Masters, uh, uh, Charlie Haas, Christian was back, um, Eugene, uh, Paul London, Muhammad Hassan, <laughs> of course, um, Tajiri, Spike Dudley, Snitsky, Shelton. Uh, you only had a couple on here that I think even to this day people kind of go, eh. And that's mostly Rob Conway, Rene Dupree, and Sil- Sylvain Grenier. Yeah, yeah. But William Regal's in here. Steven Richards. Actual Steven Richards. And Stevie Richards. <laughs> They're both in the game. Uh, two for one. But you, 
I th- yeah, I think that one w- had a really good roster. I'm going to try and pull up 2007 and see how that was. But Okay, but uh, before we shift into 07, I think 06 was a very good building block for yeah. the series because SmackDown vs. Raw kind of went down here, but it seems like 06 kind of elevated and took everything back up. Um, I think 06 was probably very close to a Here Comes the Pain like in regards to like gameplay value. Um, great roster, great modes. It's like you said, um, one of your favorites, which was the GM mode, yeah. um, was in there. Um, and actually the season mode, which actually this time had like live uh, voice recordings. Yeah. like, And it wasn't just like Eddie Guerrero or Triple H. It was, uh, there was a Steve Austin storyline. Um, there was... Um, you know, all these legends who had actually done voice recordings, um, and when you would play them, they would actually talk, and there would be, like, all these different storylines. Yeah. So, season mode was good. Um, there was also the Buried Alive match in mm-hmm. this one. Um, there was, uh, I think, Backstage Brawl. Yeah, 06 had a lot of fun match types. Um, yeah. I think Slobberknocker was in the... I, 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 I forget, that, but... I think that was... Uh, I, I think Slobberknocker... It might have been in there because that was the one where it was basically you just kept going, and kept killing going, until yeah, you lost. right, yeah. Um, which was tough. That was tough sometimes. Yeah. Um, but Slobberknocker was fun to try and outdo yourself. You had the Armageddon Hell in a Cell, I believe, debuted yes. in this one, buried alive. Um, I think this is the one that had the fulfill your fantasy. Yes, match. that's the one. That's the. Um, was Braun Panties in SmackDown versus Raw? Yes, it was. So and it, it was, was Braun Panties, the and then they were. Oh, and that one. And then they replaced it with Fulfill Your Fantasy, which was a weird... By the way, uh, I know we're kind of going backwards for a second, but um, I don't know if you know this, but there's actually an Easter egg. So if you took a diva, and yeah. here comes the pain, gave them people's elbow, yeah. when, instead of them taking off an elbow pad, they would take off an article of clothing. <laughs> and they would, th- and they they would, would throw they would eliminate it, yeah. themselves, basically? <laughs> Jesus. Um, but yeah, no, 06, um, it took, it elevated everything, great gameplay value, um, I feel like there was something that we are failing to, um, was there a create mode or was there, I feel like there's something that we're missing. There was like a mode. Uh, did they introduce the championships in that one? Create a title? Maybe. I want to say yes. Cause I want, let me see. They had to create a superstar, create a moveset, create an entrance. I think create a belt. Um... Here we go, one by one. Uh, create an entrance, general manager mode, fulfill your fantasy, buried alive, um, the momentum bar for the stamina was introduced. Right, yeah, that was good. That was good. Little uh, mini games for chops and the like sleeper holds. Pretty cool. The different grapple types that you could have. Uh, da, 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 da. And yeah, I mean... It was solid. 06 was solid with everything. Um, did we want to shift into 07? Yeah, we can. Uh, did you find out uh, what the roster count was for 07? Uh, I, oh, hold on. What did that say? As in the previous game... Title both including... So, create, create a belt might have been in the one before this, too. So, okay. it might have been in, in the original. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, Sorry guys, it, it's been it's been a minute since we've uh, played these games, so we're gonna have some of the information mixed up. So roster count on seven. Oh six was you said sixty three. Sixty three. Okay. Thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, sixty seven. Okay, so a few um, more. And this one also had a few randos, uh, <laughs> like super crazy. Psychosis. Uh, Vito. Ah. Uh, Kennedy. Kennedy, uh, Kid Cash. Uh-huh. Um, you had Dude Love, and <laughs> I think you had all three versions of Mick Foley in this one. Did I see Cactus? Yeah, Cactus, Dude Love, Mick Foley, and Mankind were all in the game individually. Four of them. There were four versions of Mick. How many versions of Hogan? Um, I think one. I think they only had Hulk Hogan. Yeah, that that probably explains it. They sacrificed Hogan for three Mick Foley's. Yep. Um, but no, a lot of the same, a lot of the same, Paul Burchill and Psychosis, yeah, uh, carried over to this one, uh, Jillian Hall, but Bam Bam Bigelow, um, 
Now, what did you think of 07? Because I can remember buying 07 and it just, I feel like 06 was, if, if we're rating it, it was at a 10. 07 for me came down to like a five. Yeah. I thought it was half the game that 06 was. Um, I think the the big thing that changed, if I'm not mistaken, in 7, and I think we ta- I talked about this on one of the previous episodes, um, controls changed a little yes. bit. And in, G, uh, in GM mode, and I don't even know if it was technically called GM mode in this one, uh, you were able to pick specific storylines for your people to, to follow, um, as opposed to just booking matches and making rivalries. Yeah. You could pick storylines. Um, but overall, I do, th- I, I, I agree. I think, there, I think there's a reason that people gravitate towards six more than seven, and it's, I just think it had a better gameplay experience. Few things that I wanted to point out. So I noticed that the commentary had taken a major hit because I would hit a Stone Cold Sunner and it would go, oh my God, there it is, the DDT, and I'm like... Yeah, there, there, what, I think what there match are, are you watching? I think there were a couple of these games where they just kind of well, went 06 and, was flawless. Yeah, 06 was flawless. But then when 07 came, I'm like, why are we stepping? Like, why is it taking a hit? It's supposed to get better. Another thing was the season mode. I felt like the stories were a little bit more dragged out in this one, and they mm-hmm. weren't as interesting. Um, yeah, I just I don't know. I just I, I didn't feel it. Like I paid the full fifty five or sixty bucks or what it was, but I just I felt like I'm like, eh, eh whatever. It's there. Sure, fine. Um. So yeah, that's kind of my uh, sentiments on 07. Seven. Seven. I th- is seven the f- seven's the first one that had the elimination chamber. No. No. no elimination. Six. Six had it. Right. Six had it. Here comes the pen. Was, was the first one that had it. I think it was a special match. And s- what? Yeah. Uh, Elimination Chamber w- made its debut, and here comes the pain. I don't think that's right. Mm, Look it up. That's right. Look it up. Because um, they had already done the brand split, hadn't they? Yeah, Eric Bischoff introduced it. Eric Bischoff introduced it, and that's why it made but it here to the come, game. here comes the pain hadn't done the brand split yet. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Up. God damn it. Elimination Elimination Chamber In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 Okay, fine (laughs) That's so weird Um I didn't think it was It dated back that far back Um No, yeah, but I mean Just with everything I don't know Is there something about 07 Just I don't know. I can't really put my finger on it. Maybe it was uh, a combination. The, the, you know what? I don't think tables matches have been the same since then. Because this is the first one where you had to like build up t- in order to do like a finisher to oh. put your opponent through the table. See, I hate that. And that's res- that's like restriction. Yeah, and like in uh, nineteen, I, uh, I I've talked about this before too with the Daniel Bryan showcase mode, where during the match with Randy Orton, which I haven't even tried to go back and beat again that has you put put him through a table at one point and there's not like an easy way that I've figured out to put him through the table um because I don't actually and I'm too lazy to look it up apparently (laughs) I don't know the mechanics of how to set somebody up on the table to like send him through or use your finisher with it well that's so I just kind of aim a suplex at the table and cross my fingers (laughs) That's the thing too is that you can't do normal moves through the announce table anymore. You, like you have to do an OMG moment, which yeah. is like again we are restricting what I can and cannot do. Yeah. Um. But yeah, do we want to shift over to 08? And I this is where I'm gonna kind of lose everyone because 08 and 09 I probably played very little. I didn't even own them. Um. But I played a very little. Um. So uh, 07 was 60, 67. You said. Uh. How many people do we got for 08? Uh, got me jumping back and forth, man. <laughs> well, while he looks that up, just remember you can catch all your favorite WWE programming only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of only nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. It's not ten dollars. Not a hundred dollars. Not a thousand. Not one million dollars. But nine ninety nine. Uh, so. 2008 uh, is SmackDown versus Raw versus ECW, basically. 
And that's the one where you see the introduction, the introduction, introduction, the introduction of such uh, renowned characters as CM Punk, Elijah Burke, <laughs> Johnny Nitro, Kenny Dykstra, mm. uh, Marcus Corvan, mm. uh, aka the Alpha Male Monty Brown, uh, Rick Rude. Uh, who else? Anybody good? Tommy Dreamer, Bald, Sabu, Bald Snitsky, Sabu. Uh, creepy ass Randy Orton. Creepy ass. Yeah, look at that picture. Scary ass Randy Orton. <laughs> um, but the roster count on this one, I'm just gonna count them all and okay. not care about so the where PSP. Because we at... this one had PSP and Nintendo DS exclusive. Right, yeah, 06 had that too. Uh, it's a 10, 20, 30, 40, 57. 57. Oh, so we, we took a hit. We took a little dial back. Yeah. I think there were less legends in this one because they. Uh, had just split it up across three brands. But I think when you are stretching out to three brands, you should have had a bigger roster at that yeah. point. Um, this one, yeah, and then you kind of just, you look through here and you kind of gloss over the names. And like I was saying with 2006, you had that really nice roster, well-rounded. But then as we shift and you get to 2008, you kind of read most of these names and you go, eh. Yeah. Like JTG, JTG. Dykstra, uh, Corvan, Henry... Uh, Ashley Massaro up there um, and then the fact of the matter is Eddie, Hardcore Holly uh, Jim Neidhart and Sergeant Slaughter weren't even available in the Playstation 2 version you had to get it on the PSP PSP or uh, for some reason Hardcore Holly only on the Nintendo DS wow he must have been that special um, Don't sand and bag those power bombs. If you uh, if you went out and you bought all three versions of the game uh, just to get all access to all the characters, uh, specifically Hardcore Holly, uh, let us know in the comments um, so that people can chide you. Anyway, <laughs> um, so 2008, I, re I think I, I was telling you that the controls felt really good, but the roster, the roster was... Didn't. Was, did not. Um... Again, I'm going to say very minimal here because 08, 09, I do not have any experience with, so... I'm, and then I'm going to, real quick, I'm going to adjust this so that I can cue this up for 2009, and then I'm going to jump over here so we can kind of gloss through some of the details. So, a uh, new struggle submission system was introduced in this one, uh, the ECW stuff, uh... Game allows several different game modes to be played. I think this one had the introduction of the Extreme Rules match where you can literally go under the ring and pick out and a pick specific... The yeah, so that, that, that... Excellent. Leave that in there. Cool. Uh, oh, I think last game on Smack to have a general manager mode. So this was oh, the last GM so mode. Oh, that was it. Sorry, Dan, for your yeah, loss. Yeah, sad panda. Uh, beat, the, beat the Clock Sprint was in here. Was there a championship scramble? Uh... I don't think so. I don't think it was in this one. I want to say it was nine had the championship scramble. Because uh, I know you love that match. One of them has it. Uh, I don't remember which one. <laughs> oh, it's such a good match type. He loves it. I hope I hope that that's in the new game. It's not going to be, but I wish it was. Um, yeah, not honestly, not like just br browsing through this breakdown, uh, there's not a lot that stands out. Um, uh, they... The let's see season and general manager modes of previous games have been merged into WWE 24/7. I think I remember 24/7 not being that engaging. Uh, Doesn't sound that engaging either. So players can choose to play one of the games uh, included superstars or create one, uh, or act as general manager of brand playing as a wrestler. The goal. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. I don't think it was a bad gameplay experience. I just think it was a lot more shallow. Yes. Um, so then we can jump forward Shift over to, to 09. 09. So you said we took a hit. We were down to 57? 57, yes. 57. Uh, okay. And so 2009. Which, had... by the way, I may be wrong. This is a rare game to not feature either The Rock or Steve Austin. And I don't know what the decision was behind that because usually, like Austin and Rock are are kind of like your, the 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 face of like the legends who are in yeah. the games. It's like those two are plastered all over the place. But I don't know what the creative meeting was. But for whatever reason, Austin and Rock are nowhere to be found in this game. 
Yeah. Oh, well. But this one, 76. Wow. Okay. Step up. Um, a handful of them downloadables. Um, couple are... Uh, is this when they started doing that? DLC, download additional superstars? I think yeah. that's when they started, yeah. Um, things like Evan Bourne, Chris Jericho with Trunks, the Bushwhackers. Um, doink. Um, but... Is Gobbledygooker in there? No. Masked Man is, though, from the plot line with John Cena. Um, which was weird. Mr. Kennedy, now known as Mr. Kennedy. Um, Kennedy. Trevor Murdoch with a terrifying face. What in the hell? I don't know. It looks like... That he, looks like a... It looks like he melted. Uh, and oh, I then, thought you said it looks like you. I'm like, gee, thanks, Dan. And then Tony, the, the military man that is also from that storyline. So there was a couple of weird things about this game overall. Um, long-haired Zack Ryder. Um, <laughs> Kofi, I think this is Kofi's debut. Debut? Okay. And Jimmy Wang Yang. Y'all remember Jimmy Jimmy Wang Yang? Who doesn't? Give him some love in the comments. Um, <laughs> so 2009 uh, had created a finisher. Oh, okay, so that's where it got introduced. Okay. Uh, Road to WrestleMania, okay. career, and multiplayer season mode were all introduced in this one. We also saw the Inferno match. <laughs> so there was some there was some interesting stuff here. Now some Road, good tweaks. Yeah. So Road to WrestleMania, as they're putting it, replacing the popular general manager mode. Um, it allowed the player to play through personalized storylines for various characters: Cena, Triple H, Undertaker, Jericho, Punk, and then Batista and Rey Mysterio as a tag team. So you're your main guys essentially yeah. all the time. Um, and so e e that was basically your your season mode at that yes. point. Is that it was each person playing through all the way to WrestleMania where you'd unlock superstars along the way. I'm pretty sure John Cena's was the one where you had the Masked Man and, yes. and Tony show up. Um, again, this one was good. This was a decent game. Um, I'm neither here nor there because, again, I haven't owned it, so I can't really say. But, I mean, it sounds like an upgrade. I mean, when you got the 73 superstars, um, who were the legends in the, in this one, does it say? The legends in... Because, again, I, I, I don't know who's in there, but I know who's not in there, which is Steve Austin and The Rock, which is mind-boggling to me. So, they don't break them down as legends in this one. But you had the Bushwhackers, you had Doink the Clown, Earthquake, um, and Vader. That's, That's about it? it. That's about it for your legends. They, they took a step down with the legends. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. But, uh, yeah, the, ga the game itself, as I recall, still, it was, it was fine. It was, a, it was a, a decent game. It was there. Yeah. Um, now, the next one, that, which was basically my uh, renaissance back into the SmackDown vs. Raw series... However, I got it on the PS2, not the PS3, but I think that it's probably the best out of the SmackDown vs. Raw series, which was SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. Um, I don't. I think maybe one reason why for me it, it stood out is because I, since I missed 08 and 09, I now have three years worth of features that have been collected into one game. Yeah. So while to everybody else it was relatively old, to me it was relatively new. But I remember playing the road to WrestleMania, and I thought that it was actually one of the most entertaining original storylines yeah. put in there, which was really good. Creative finisher was really good. Um, the roster was actually like it was up to par, with the exception of Steve Austin missing, but I don't know. Um, better gameplay mechanics. Um, yeah, I just uh, oh, and uh, I think it had this one had to create a story introduced. Which one? Ten. Yeah. Uh, which was a great addition. Awesome addition, which unfortunately was taken out. I hope they put it back in. Please put it back in because... Yeah, story I, designer. Yeah, that easily ate up a lot of hours in SmackDown vs. Raw. They also had the highlight reel where you can now like take the camera and you can you know put it in different angles and whatnot. So, uh, and oh, this one had the blood feature. And I think in PS2 it was toned up, but in PS3 if you bust your opponent up, their blood smears all over your hands, on your chest, on the on the ring. Um, they also had features where you can grab stuff from the audience and you can use it. Mm -hmm. um, great. SmackDown vs. Raw 2010 was absolutely great. I love it. Probably my, my favorite one out of the entire SmackDown vs. Raw series. Yeah. Um, I'll highlight a couple of things here. You had the Brand Warfare uh, cooperative storyline in this one. 
you had a couple other stories. Uh, Edge, Shawn Michaels, and Randy. Yeah. Uh, what else did I see? This one is the introduction of the championship scramble match. <laughs> there you go, Dad. Uh, so, already a fan. Um, if only we had GM mode in there. Yep. Be perfect. Perfect game. Uh, 67 superstars in this one. Wow. Okay. Uh, so, this one uh, had... The introduction of Beth Phoenix, I believe. I don't think she was in the previous one. The Bellas. <laughs> um, Ziggler. Really? This was the first one? Uh, I believe so. I don't think okay. I saw him on the previous screen. Uh, right. Jesse and Festus. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else did I see? Natty. Natty making her appearance here. Mm. Uh, R-Truth. Oh, interesting. Uh, red and green, who were sort of your. That was so. It was the 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 training <laughs> but, guys from the yeah. the move set thing. Yeah, they were preview the moves for you. That, that was weird. Uh, and the Brian Kendrick, uh, all kind of fun fun additions. Uh, but you saw the return here of the Rock and Stone Cold. So they, I think they, Stone Cold was your pre order bonus. Yeah. Unless you pre ordered him, you would not be able to get it. So yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, again, decent, decent little Solid. roster here. Yes. Uh, so not too bad. Uh, we'll move forward to the the final game in this chunk, and this is SmackDown versus Raw 2011. How many superstars were in uh, 2010? 67. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. 67. Now that we go over to SmackDown versus Raw 2011, and uh, while we're on, I think this was yeah, this was the first game where it had like the old school uh, character select screen where everyone's pictures was on the screen and you would go as opposed to scrolling one by one and looking at who's next in alphabetical I order. I think so. Um, but yeah, so we're up to uh, 67 and, and 2010. 10, um, 30. Stop it. 10, 20. Would you stop moving? Sorry. Technology. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 78 stars. Wow. I think that's the largest one yet. Uh, I believe so. Okay. Um, this one, and I'll, I'll just highlight a couple of the, the new additions newcomers? here. Okay. Uh, you had Alicia Fox show up, David Otunga. Mm -hmm. Uh, you had Drew McIntyre. Interesting. But cho it was a chosen, chosen one, Drew yes. McIntyre. Not, uh... Uh, Scottish psychopath. Correct. Uh, Cody Rhodes. <laughs> the irony. Uh, the Druid. That was weird. <laughs> um, Justin Gabriel. Eh. Maurice. Eh. MVP. Nah. Uh, Undertaker Badass. Really? He was in this? Yep. And then Wade Barrett and Yoshitatsu were also here. Beautiful. Oh, and Seamus. Seamus. So, a lot of new faces, uh, some of whom are still around, uh, most of which are not. Yes. Um, but let's jump in and see what was new on this Actually, one. Cody Rhodes was in uh, SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. Was he? Yes, he oh, was. I must have just part, glossed part of over. Part legacy. But, um... Because I saw DiBiase, I just apparently glossed over Cody. Yeah. Um, honest... Okay, so, I was actually a bit frustrated with, uh, 2011... I will say this, the Royal Rumble um, was awesome. It got a massive upgrade in 2010 and then was worked on in 2011. That was a great upgrade. The one thing that was beyond frustrating to me, and this again, this goes back to restricting the player, was apparently, it, it, wasn't, a ma it, it wasn't tradition where you would lo grapple and you can do any move you want. You would apparently have to start off with small moves and then as the match would go on, you would work your way up uh, into doing big moves. Mm -hmm. So you would first do punches, chops, body slams, and then you would get into power slams and suplexes and power bombs. And then you would get into the finishers and the yeah. theatrics, which I thought was so bad because for, like the, for the first two minutes of the match, you're just spamming the same move over and over again, waiting to get to that next phase where you can do another yeah. big move. Um, that was frustrating. That was, uh, that was just, I didn't like it. Um, uh, I think the season mode, which was essentially the, the road to WrestleMania, was okay. Um, they had the fun one with, uh, like the, uh, where you select a suit, a random, like, mid car and he goes through the Undertaker storyline where, you know, there's caskets and Drews and empty arenas and all that, you know, supernatural stuff, which we were talking about earlier with the Fiend and the Bump in the Night. That was a good way of experimenting a little bit with the supernatural. Um, 
I think all the other features, you know, were still in there. Create a finisher, create a story, and all that. Um, I thought it was okay. Not the best wrestling game. It was, uh, whatever. But I think that SmackDown versus Raw 2010 was where, like, the gold standard was. Yeah. Uh, so, burning through some of the, th- the newer things that appeared on 2011... Uh, they did some revamping to certain things. Tables would break depending on the way that they were hit. Hell in a Cell match was adjusted, um, which included going through the wall to get out. Uh-huh. Um, WWE Universe was introduced, which replaced Career Mode. Um, I don't remember liking Universe. I don't know what that mode is for anyway. Like, uh, I don't get the reason behind it. Uh, it says, The mode builds storylines and in- integrates cutscenes and rivalries between wrestlers based on the matches. But... This was the one where, like, there wasn't really any structure to it. It was just you kind of played through. Like, I think... I don't even think you made the card. I think the game generated a card. You picked what you wanted to play. There'd be weird cutscenes where, like... Uh, I wanted to say Brock Lesnar, but I don't think Lesnar showed yeah, up yeah. in this game for any reason. But, like, somebody would run out and attack you, and you'd be like, okay, well, now what? And then it would just kind of go on as if it didn't happen anyway. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, Road to WrestleMania. This one ha- w- was neat because it had a Road to WrestleMania for your creator wrestler. Yes. Where you could try to defeat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was pretty neat. Um, this is where they introduced the top rope uh, creator finisher. Oh, okay. And Story Designer got more stuff to it. Also yes. online mode. So I think this is the first one that had like the actual online okay. gameplay. Again, I was on the PS2, so that that was like a, it was different. Uh, if you were on the PS3, that's where you can have full access to that. So uh, it does say online mode also returns, so it might have been the one before this. I don't, okay. I don't remember exactly where it started, but yeah, I mean, I would I would agree. I I think there were some misfires in the SmackDown vs. Yes. Raw series. Um, my top three would probably be the even numbered ones: six, eight, and ten. Yeah. Um. I would say I'd probably go 6, 10, and 8, I think would be my order. Okay. So 6 is my top, and that's because uh, that's because of GM mode, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's such, a fu- it's such a fun mode to play through, and you can play through it, like, honestly, you could play through it, like, for two years straight, and then put the game down, come back two years after that, and then be like, you know what? Let's play some GM mode, and it's got the same feel. Yeah. And the I I like that there's a dynamicness to it, based on the fact that you get to draft your superstars, you get to pick your matches. It, options, options, options. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's like going into a sandwich shop and having all these toppings available to you, and you can say, I could eat in this shop every day for a year and never have the same sandwich. Right. And that's what made that one so fun to replay. Yeah. 10 introduced some some of the new features that I liked, and I, like I said, 2008 uh, had a nice uh, control system. Yeah. Uh, what about you? Uh, I know we skipped two for you. Was, yeah, what, nine, yeah. So was that nine and ten. Eight, 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 oh eight and oh nine is is eight what I nine. skipped out. Um, 2010 is is number one. Um, oh six is two, and probably the original. Is probably my number oh, three. Oh five. Oh five. Yeah. Um, um. Yeah. I. I feel like with the SmackDown versus Raw. Now that I look at it, it was either a hit, or it was a miss. Yeah. It seems like maybe you can argue with Oh Nine, where it was. It was kind of in between. But I feel like for the majority, it's either they either got it, or they didn't. Yeah. Um, and I would say based on the fact that I went with the even the even numbered ones, and then you said five, six, and then you skipped a couple, but you went back to another even number. Yeah, I think that kind of lends itself to what we've said about this: take two years to develop the new game. Yeah, and then you might actually have something of value, right. as opposed to just kind of throwing a game at us and us going, "The hell is this?" Yeah. <laughs> you ever see the video online of the kitty opens a, a Christmas present and it's a fucking avocado? And he just goes, it's an avocado. You Thanks. Mean, and he just sets it down on the floor. That's what all of the odd-numbered games are like for us. There was another one where a kid <laughs> opens up a bag and it's a banana. He goes, a banana. And he literally just feels it and eats it. Yeah. But he's like, like he starts like hugging the banana, <laughs> you know. Kids are weird. But Some of them. No, it's, it's just you're giving me a gift that doesn't really matter. 
in the form of those games where you're like, cool, thanks for 2007. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I SmackDown versus Raw, like at the time it seemed like it was like a forever thing, but now that you look back, you're like, oh, it was just six games. Yeah. Um, the, the sucky part, and we'll get into this, as the series progressed outside of SmackDown vs. Raw, we saw that some of these features, which were prominent and were a must-have, slowly got eliminated. Yeah. Your creative finisher, your creative story, your season modes, uh, even some like uh, additions of the roster. Yeah. Um, I think the complexion of the whole series changed, and again, it's like it's one of those things, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. You know? Um... So, yeah, I mean, closing sentiment, SmackDown vs. Raw had a good run. Um, I, I think it's one of those games where, like, if you pick one of the ones that we put in our top three, I think you can just pop that sucker in and just start playing as exactly, if. Exactly, yeah. Um, but, just, just make sure you've got room on your memory card. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's right. Yeah, to stick different memory cards to load up the correct thing. Um, I, I keep screwing that up on my because I have 2006 just in my PlayStation right now. And I have a profile on each memory card that's in there, and it always tries to go to one, and it has nothing unlocked. And I'm like, where the fuck are my superstars? <laughs> so I have to switch over to get it right. But yeah, what are so uh, any closing sentiments before we um, wrap up SmackDown uh, vs. Raw? I would say overall, SmackDown vs. Raw is a positive chapter in the history of the of wrestling games in general, but specifically this this. Uh, era yeah. of video games, the SmackDown lineage. Um, it, again, I keep throwing it to to the to whoever's listening. Give us your top three SmackDown versus Raw games from 05 to uh, 2011 yeah. down in the comments. Uh, see how see how we all compare. Um, but I, I yeah, I'd like to see some of the modes that were in this get revamped and reintroduced at some point. Absolutely. And I think I think we'll see this year. I think this is going to be a big year, I think, because it's 20. 20, Just yeah. like with every time WWE does a 25th anniversary, 20th anniversary, yeah. they try to do something big. Yeah. Um, I think this is going to be them pulling out a lot of stops. Well, I mean, if if this is an indicator, again, the bump in the night, yeah. great addition. You have China coming yeah. back into the game. Um, mixed tag team matches. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like there's one more addition. Both male and female create a, um, uh, what is it, career, career mode. mode, which uh, don't hold your breath for that one because it seems <laughs> like it's it's like they show you one thing in the trailer, but then when you actually play, you're like, uh, disappointing. But no, yeah, they've been pulling out some really good stops, yeah. and if you actually, I mean, I feel like they're still withholding information. I think there was an event that they that they usually like reveal more information that's coming up, yeah. but this year they canceled it because from what the reports say they want to focus on creating a good game yeah mm, I go back and forth with that I feel like I've heard that every other year but yeah. we'll see we'll see um, but, but I'm, I'm trying to re remain optimistic yes about this coming year but yeah join us next week uh, for just 12 and 13, 12, 13 essentially we were doing 12, 13, 14 are we? 15 are, right? are we? I think so because I'm tw twelve and thirteen was its own thing, and then two. I think we were was... talking twelve to fifteen, so that we could talk about bridging the gap between the jump okay. to two K. Okay. And then we were gonna go from 17, 16, 16 to, to, to present. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> welcome to our brainstorming session. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so a next, little bit of everything. So next week we'll uh, we'll talk tw uh, twelve to fifteen, twelve through fifteen, um, and then sixteen to nineteen the following week, um, but. Thanks for listening into, uh, we haven't even really named this chunk of the, uh, again, uh, road to WWE 2K20. Yeah, that works. Um, yeah, cause essentially we're, we're kind of building to like the finale of like, okay, with all this said, and again, you said this one's going to be a big hit because it's 20. What do we get this year? Yeah. So, um, yeah, there you go, guys. We reviewed the first five original SmackDown games. We just reviewed the SmackDown vs. Raw series. Join us next time on the third part of this Road to WWE 2K. Actually, fourth episode, third part to reviewing the all the games. <laughs> it's very technical. Um, you get it. You're all smart. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining us. And remember, always and forever, 
Damn it, we didn't come we up didn't. with one. Nope. Um, Always and forever, press pause. Is that what we're going with? I don't know. I, I feel like it's supposed to be like a, a controller pun. I don't know. Uh, I, uh, did you did you stop the video?